Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and um, today I have a, well, it's technically a bayonet, but I don't use it as a bayonet, um, despite the fact that I own an AR uh, style rifle. Um, this is just a really, really big knife, and this is a really, really big utility knife for me. Um, I don't own a lot of really, really big knives or anything like that. I much prefer to carry something kind of smaller, like a multi-tool, something that has a lot more functions in it. Um, that's in a much smaller package. Um, it's a lot easier to pack, and it's usually a lot lighter weight. Um, but this is a knife I'll take out with me, um, hunting or something like that, because it does actually work quite well as far as, um, skinning and leverage and stuff like that goes, as long as you, you know, maintain this knife. Um, this is also a knife that uh, I throw a lot because these are actually surprisingly well balanced um, and I don't really have to worry about breaking the tip off because they're like a quarter inch thick. Now uh, the knife which you see before you, uh, any of you in the US military um, post 1986 will know what this is. This is the M9 bayonet um, slash uh, wire cutter slash utility knife. Um, this is comparable to like the Marines K bar, but for the rest of the branches, it's a pretty famous fighting knife and it's influenced a lot of other knives and everything like that and bayonets throughout the world, um, including um, uh, a lot of other uh, like famous movie knives, like Rambo's knife is based off of one of these and stuff like that. Um, it's a very, very large knife. Now this came out in 1986 to um, replace the M8 bayonet. Um, that you, uh, a lot of you, uh, more Vietnam veterans will be, uh, quite, uh, familiar with. Um, but, uh, this knife is, uh, one of the early Gen 1s. This is the, uh, the Frobus, uh, this one is actually, uh, it says right on the blade. It is a, uh, M9 Frobus 3. This is the Gen 4. Now, there's a lot of different generations of, uh, these knives, and, um, you don't really see this one anymore because this one was actually very expensive to produce with its like um, w uh, special corrosion resistant finish on the blade. They did away with that in the later versions. Uh, the, ni uh, the handle was changed to a more ergonomic handle. It's not the waffle pattern anymore. It's actually a, a more hourglass shaped uh, comfort grip. Um, but I like the old waffle handles the best. Um, now, um, if you... If you look, um, this knife is actually, if I, if I could get it to do it on camera here, um, but I sit here and I play with it a lot actually, but it's actually, um, if I can get it to work, it's actually a very, very, very well balanced knife. Uh, it's very easy to maintain, it's very easy to take apart because there's no pins or anything in it as you can see there. It's actually balanced right on the, the guard here, um, but the guard is actually kind of rounded so it doesn't doesn't just stand up on the guard even if you put it on a flat surface but it'll actually it's actually perfectly well balanced pretty much now this has a seven inch blade um now as you can see is ungodly thick blade it's like a quarter inch thick it's serrated on the top um not serrated on the bottom and it has a little uh eyelet in it for uh connecting with the case there to form a wire cutter um for disassembly you have one um, hex bolt uh, there that you have to undo um, to take the back end off and then this just slides right off the tang so if you want to change the grips or anything um, the guard will come with it so if anything goes wrong um, this is a very very easy knife to convert and put your own handle on if you wanted to um, it's a very very good steel um, these knives are actually uh, the older gen ones like this are getting very very uh, expensive and hard to find especially in really good condition um, this one very easy to sharpen, uh, very, very easy to take care of because of the finish on it, the newer ones. Um, you do have to take care of a little bit more because they don't have the nice uh, corrosion resistant finish on it. Um, but, and they come in pretty much, uh, this knife has been copied by so much Chinese knife makers and other countries and everything like that. You can find these in almost any price range um, and any length and configuration and style, even ones that have storage in the handle and stuff like that and aren't meant to be bayonets. Um, so, uh, they're very, very uh, easy to find out there. Now, this is actually a pretty hefty blade, um, as you can tell by the thickness, which means it's heavy. Um, but now the case here, uh, we'll, we'll bring the case forward and we'll put the knife in the back there. 
Um, so now the case here will come with the pouch. Uh, the pouch doesn't need to be on there. The pouch is only held in uh, by this strap of Velcro, so you could take that off and remove it if you want to. Um, now this snap, uh, which is connected to the case via these two uh, hex bolts, um, the snap hides the uh, whetstone uh, for sharpening. There's the uh, the Frobus logo. It's a dolphin, all right. Um, so this is the original case to this knife. Um, it's made out of uh, two uh, layers of green plastic. Um, now the case uh, in here, I just keep a piece of paracord, and um, if I could get it open, well, I'm not gonna yank on it with one hand uh, on the camera, but I keep a piece of paracord in here uh, so that um, I can tie this around uh, through these two channels here and tie it around my thigh so it doesn't slap around a lot. Um, but um, it's also completely deconnectable, so if uh, you have uh, the belt attachment on your uh, loop, these are Bianche, uh, Bianchi um, belt clips, so kind of like on my M12 holster video, if you've seen one of those, same belt attachment. Uh, this will route through Moly, it'll connect to pretty much every belt, um, including uh, like Alice, Alice gear and stuff like that. Um, so it works very well, it's a very universal attachment method. Um, so you undo this snap, and then if you want to, you could take the whole thing off, the whole guard there. Uh, it's held in place by one big buckle, one uh, two-inch buckle there. Um, the case itself is uh, it's held in uh, place with tension. Uh, as you can see that, see if I rotate it up and down, there's still this one sp bar in there. And that's just a spring. It's just a flat spring. It's just to hold the knife uh, from falling out, even if you um, don't have it uh, secured in uh, with this strap. Um, it's you're going to need to shake it pretty hard to get the knife to fall out. So that's just an extra safety measure with the knife. Um, the knife also has a drain hole in the bottom, so you don't have to worry about uh, water building up in your sheath, which will ruin your knife. Um, but uh, we'll show you how the bayonet uh, connects into the, the loop here. So what you want to do is you want to line up the stud. Come on now. There you go. So you line up the stud with uh, one handle, uh, with the handle, and now when you're using this as a wire cutter, so you don't dull your edge, you want to use the top of the blade. Now the top of the blade is actually square cut, okay, and it will snip wire as long as you push hard enough. And then you just uh, rotate it around there with the wire in there, and boop, it'll pinch it right off. So um, it'll work uh, quite easy. Now um, I've actually only used this once. Uh, to cut something and it was actually an electric fence um, but because the sheath is plastic and the knife handle is plastic as long as you don't contact uh, the back part of the knife here which is metal or the guard as long as you're very careful to not do that you can hold the sheath and uh, the knife by the handle and you can cut an electric fence without getting shocked not like getting shocked is like bad it doesn't hurt really all that bad when you touch an electric fence, it just kind of surprises you. It stings a bit, but it's not not anything super bad you have to worry about. But if you'd rather not, uh, it's something you can do. I'm not saying go around and start cutting people's electric fences, but it's something you can do. Now, uh, this knife is uh, came out in 1986, and um, it is currently still in use. This is the standard issue. Um, it's made by a couple different manufacturers. Uh, this one was made by Frobis. I don't know if Frobis makes them anymore. Um, Buck Knives made them, um, Buck Knives I think still makes them, but they were also one of the first gen uh, contractors, so they, some of those have a, a good finish on them too, um, and then uh, they were made by the Ontario Knife Company, um, a lot of, a lot of companies made these, um, and they're very, very good knives, uh, if you want something big and uh, that you're never going to break because it is ungodly thick and pretty much indestructible. Um, these are very, very uh, awesome knives to have. Uh, if you can find them, you can find them at surplus stores, you can find them on the internet. Um, uh, like I said, I prefer to have one of the older Gen 1s with the nice finish on it, uh, with the uh, metal resistant, uh, the corrosion resistant, sorry, not metal resistant finish on it, um, because I don't have to take care of it as nice, because it's not something I use all that often, so not having to take care of it if I'm not using it for long periods of time is very, very nice, um, because this sits around a lot. I don't use it all that often, so, um, but, uh, thank you, that'll be lunch getting ready there, so thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!